Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. A lot of people have been asking me lately to do a video about sort of top 10 items for first time preppers, for people new to it. What, what do I suggest people should be getting for themselves? I also get a lot of questions about what do I have in my bug out bag, which you see behind me. Uh, this is my bug out bag. It's also kind of my EDC pack. I've got it here in the scene uh, because it's relevant to the scene. It's called mise en scène in the filmmaking community. It's French for something, meaning you put something relevant to the scene in the scene. Uh, and that's what I want to talk about today. And the reason I want to talk about it today is because uh, I'm recording this in late summer of 2017. Uh, there's been a lot of very large hurricanes hitting the southeastern United States. Uh, Hurricane Irma is coming in for Florida in the next couple days uh, while I'm recording this. And uh, that is the biggest hurricane ever recorded in the Atlantic, you know, history of recording hurricanes. Um, Obviously, none of this has to do with climate change because that's just a plot by Toyota. But there are a lot of very uh, large hurricanes, uh, and they are causing a lot of problems for people because people are not prepared for them. Uh, I wanted to play a little audio clip that I heard on NPR the other day. Uh, it's a woman who is talking at the beginning of the story about Harvey coming into Texas uh, and uh, Harvey being the hurricane. And, uh, and then there's an interview with her afterwards. And at the beginning of the interview, you can hear that she's almost romantically, you know, sort of characterizing this hurricane com coming in. At the, end, uh, at the end of the beginning of the interview, she says something along the lines of, if, if you must take anything, take, take me, you know, spare, spare the people around me. Um, and then uh, the hurricane ends up hitting her house, and she has a different take on it. So let's listen to that clip right now. A few days before Hurricane Harvey made landfall, Sarah Cress wrote a poem titled Hurricane Prayer. She referenced some of the other storms she's seen hit Houston over the years. She's lived there since she was six. I point my body to the sea the night before landfall and remember every unsettled dusk I've lived before, all named after kids down the street I never liked. Ike, Rita, Alicia, the redhead. Each one steals a little piece, a marble from the set, leaving me incomplete. The poem goes on, asking the hurricane to spare her friends and family. She ends saying, if you must take anything, just take me. Harvey ended up taking her home. She told us her story, starting with Sunday. It's so surprising when it happens. I saw the water that night start to pond in the street in a, in a new way. Like I, I knew that it wasn't moving. And I was like, I have to sleep sometime. So at around 2 a.m., I tried to go to sleep, and I got a couple of hours of sleep. And then I just woke up, and the water was in the yard, and I was like, this is it. And then immediately it was on the front step, and then immediately it was in our closet, and then immediately it was everywhere else. And by the time we actually got everything together, we had about a foot in the house in a matter of 20 minutes. And so we put together as much as we could. We got the two dogs secured and abandoned. Sarah Cress says there are many things she wishes she had done differently. So she's urging others to do what she did not. We did a few things by putting um, just some important things up higher, but we didn't put together a kit of any kind. We didn't put together a bag of essential items. That was something that I'm very upset with myself that I didn't do. We should have had pet carriers out. We should have had a, a to-go kit, you know, for them too. Um, we didn't have our phones in plastic bags, so they were in our pockets when we were walking through the water, and I didn't realize how deep the water is, so our phones were dead by the time we got to a safe space. Um, I don't think anyone can be prepared. There's not so much you can do, really, but you can at least have things just ready to go. And we are, we've learned so much. We're never going to be without a, a a bag just ready to go, and pet things ready to go. I've learned my lesson. So I'm sorry that clip was a little long, but I thought it was worth listening to because uh, you can see that this woman was completely unprepared for uh, you know what, the, the situation that she was thrown into. Uh, she talked about how her, you know she had no sense of 
having anything ready to leave her house. She had, you know, her cell phone was destroyed because she didn't even think about having a plastic bag for, for bringing it out in the rain. Uh, she'd given absolutely no foresight to any of this, and it put her in a position later on that was much less comfortable than she could have been with just a little bit of preparation. Um, so again, I apologize if that was a long clip. This whole episode is going to be kind of long, and you're just going to be seeing me talk. Uh, you know, I, I've been putting off doing this episode for a while because I was just trying to think of a way of making it more entertaining. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I've got a list here of what I have in my, my various packs and bags, and I was thinking, well, should I show a picture of each thing to spice it up? But I mean, honestly, if I say flashlight, you don't need to see a picture of a flashlight. So. It's going to be a long episode, but I hope it's helpful. I hope it's informative. At the beginning, I'm going to talk about sort of my philosophy for how I prepare to leave my house, and that might be relevant to people, even uh, people that, uh, you know, are veteran preppers. Uh, so let's start off with that. I'm sorry, even my explanation of why this episode is going to be boring was long-winded and boring. <laughs> uh, but let's get to it. Um, the way I look at, um, at bugging out is uh, sort of the same way as I look at camping because camping is kind of bugging out. I, I mean, a lot of people talk about the differences between, you know, bugging out in a collapse and, and camping. It, yeah, I, I guess there's more of a worry that you're going to get, like, you know, carjacked or, or, you know, attacked by people in a collapse. But 99% of all the stuff that you would need in a collapse is the same kind of stuff that you bring camping. So my philosophy is that I like to be ready to run out the door and go camping with 20 minutes notice. And to make that happen, I've made a list for myself, and I've broken up a lot of my stuff by category. Now, I said this is my bug out bag, this is my EDC pack. This thing, all by itself, has a lot of stuff that is helpful to me, but I've also layered on top of that other things that would make things even more comfortable for me if I have that extra, you know, 20 minutes. Like I said, this I can grab, be out the door, and I'm gone in 30 seconds. But if I have a little bit of warning, I can make things a lot more comfortable for myself. Beyond my EDC pack, I have a food bag that I have you know, rice and beans and various things in there. I'll go into detail on that later. I have a camping bag, which has all sorts of camping tools, you know, all the random things you use when you're camping. I have a shelter bag, which has my, my tent in it, you know, the tarps that would go underneath the tent or over the tent, things of that nature. Uh, I like to bring my rocket stove with me if I'm going to be in the car. Now, obviously, if I had to leave my car, the rocket stove that I've made other videos is heavy. I would not bring that along with me. But it's a convenience, and if I'm going to be in my car, I grab the rocket stove. I have uh, you know, a set of cooking pots that I bring with me. I have a bag that's just full of bedding and things like that because if you're cold at night and you're not sleeping, uh, you know, you're not going to be very effective the next day. That also has like sleeping pads, things of that nature. Um, I have a clothing bag that just has clothes ready to go. Uh, sleeping pads that come with me. I uh, always want to bring a pillow. I don't know about other people, but I just don't really sleep really well if I don't have a pillow. I know there's alternatives to that. You can just take a bag, fill it with you know, laundry and things of that nature, but if you get time to grab a pillow, grab a pillow, yo. And I also bring a glass jug with water. Uh, I bring that when I'm camping because I like the taste of the water out of the glass. I also have a big five-gallon plastic jug that's, you know, not going to get cracked or anything that in an emergency I would bring with me. Um, I have a, an emergency add-on bag that just has all sorts of weird odds and ends that you're not going to need when you're camping that I don't bring with me when I'm camping. Everything previous that I said is a camping tool that I bring with me. I have an emergency add-on bag that has Geiger counters, <laughs> things of that nature. You're not going to need on a, a, your average camping trip. Um, a, a, a Glock. I, uh, I have a, Glo a 9mm Glock that I don't bring with me camping. Uh, just, but I live in New England and um, it's just... it's legally prohibitive crossing state lines in New England with firearms because you need a license in every state and it's just a pain in the ass so I don't do it. Uh, but that would be something in, an, in a, you know, a shit hits a fan situation that I think I would risk. <laughs> I would risk, uh, you know, running with the law just to protect my family. Uh, and I also have a case of money in the basement, uh, extra am ammunition, extra extra clips for the, uh, for the Glock and, th and things of that nature. So I've sort of layered things where if I'm just running outside the house on any given day, I always bring my EDC pack. And then I've got all this stuff down here, which is the stuff that I bring when I'm camping, everything that I ran through. And then if there's a crazy emergency and I don't think I'm going to be back to the house for a while, I'll bring all that stuff plus all those extra things, the emergency add-on, the water jug, the Glock, you know, lots of cash, those types of things. So I've broken uh, this... Uh, 
all the things that, down that I have into all these different categories. So when I go camping, I just check down the list. Do I have my food bag? Do I have my camp bag? And everything. It makes it really easy to go camping. Now, all I really have to do generally is just you know bring a few extra snack foods, pack a few extra pieces of clothing, and I'm out the door. I don't ever really actually go camping on 20 minutes notice, but it's nice to not be forgetting anything. Uh, and, and as I've been going camping, I've been adding things to this list. Now, here is my list of what I have inside my EDC pack. There's a lot of stuff in here. Now, I'm going to go through what's in my EDC pack in this video. I'm not going to go through everything that's in my food bag, my camping bag, and everything, um, and all those things. It would make the video really long, and also, for a reason I'll explain later, I don't think that would be super relevant to you. Uh, but I am going to go through my EDC pack. This is what I carry every day. It's also kind of my bug out bag. It is overkill for an EDC pack, but I like having all this stuff in here. It's also kind of my dad bag, you know, if my boy gets cuts and scrapes and things of that nature. Um, there's extra snacks in there for him. There's water. Uh, so it is overkill, and it gives me extra exercise walking around with a heavy backpack and keeps me in shape if I ever need to be walking around with it. Um, so I'm going to go through what I have in here, and there are about... 30 different items, and I, I won't spend a lot of time on any, any given one. I have cash in there. I have about $500 of cash in this bag. If you ever see me on the street, this bag is worth $500 in cash if you can rip it off my back. Um, I think that's a good idea, you know, if credit cards don't go to, uh, aren't working or whatever. I just think it's good to have cash. So you go buy a yard sale. Uh, you know, I, I was at a, uh, a place where there was a big grinding stone that I've had in the background of a lot of my videos, uh, and, it, you know, I use it pretty frequently. Uh, and I got that for 80 bucks uh, at a, an old antique store. I was just driving by. I didn't have 80 bucks in my wallet, and they didn't take credit cards. So having the cash in here allowed me to get that. So that was really handy. I keep passports for myself and my boy. Uh, you never know. You know. <laughs> so they're in there. I keep a, a small solar panel and a charger that charges AA batteries and also is used as a USB charger that can charge up a cell phone or things of that nature. It's just a small one, but in a pinch, I've got it in there. I have larger solar panels too that I bring with me when I'm camping, but I don't want to be carrying those all the time because they're bulky, they're you know somewhat heavy, and uh, if you're not gonna, if it's gonna prohibit you from actually taking your EDC pack with you because it just gets too heavy, uh, you know there's no point in having it at all. So it's a small solar panel about this big. It's a Goal Zero uh, Nomad Seven solar panel that I have in there. I've got some extra AA batteries that are rechargeable that I can charge up in there. I've got a flashlight that also backs up, uh, also doubles as a USB power supply uh, that I can charge that off of the, the solar panel. I've got a water filter, a small one. It's called Life Straw. Uh, just, you know, in an emergency, it's nice to be able to purify some water. I also have my water bottle right in the side there. This is an old vinegar bottle that I put a, a wine cork in the top of. It pops off, and that's my water bottle they take everywhere. Uh, I, I take an orienteering compass with me all the time, uh, and I actually use that fairly frequently. Uh, in, my, in my work, when I was out, I, I'm, a, I'm a cinematographer, you'd always want to know where the sun was, uh, different times of day where south, in terms of setting up uh, shots for lighting and things like that. Um, but I, I found my orienteering compass uh, pretty useful. I have a plier multi-tool in there. Uh, it, it's kind of a crappy one. It's a, a Bear Grills. Grills? Plier multi-tool. I, I, I bought it like used somewhere before I even knew who Bear Grylls was and then found out that it was kind of junky, but it's good enough <laughs> and I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't wanted to spend the money on a better one yet. Um, it's not terrible, but uh, it's kind of it's kind of hard to open up any of the tools and bah, whatever. But I've got a, a multi-tool in there and I use that reasonably frequently for the pliers and everything. Um, I've got some pepper spray in there. Uh, like I said, it, in New England, crossing state lines and everything, it's just you can't really have a firearm on you unless you're going to separately get a permit in every single one of the New England states. So I want to have some kind of defensive capability. I've got some pepper spray in there. Uh, I've got a pack-mounted knife that I use most of the time right up here. I love SOG knives. This is a SOG knife. It's just a small little one. That's really handy. I, it's up, up here near my neck. I wasn't able to mount it lower. My old pack, I used to have it mounted lower on the pack. But uh, I use that an awful lot. Whenever I need a knife for anything, pop, there it is. And uh, it's a little hard to put back without stabbing me in the neck, but whatever. Uh, I've, I've also got a small fold-out knife that's inside the pack. I've got a knife sharpener. I think that's helpful. You could always use a rock, but 
it's handy to have a small knife sharpener in there. I've got a cylinder full of uh, 20 waterproof matches. It's an old film canister. I don't know, can you even buy 35 milli millimeter film canisters anymore? But that's waterproof. I've got some matches um, uh, stuck in there. I also have a lighter. Uh, I have a matchbook uh, that I just picked up somewhere. I'm always finding discarded matchbooks. People say if you find a matchbook on the ground and it's you know it might have gotten wet and rain, it's probably you know, won't work anymore, but I've never found a book of matches that didn't work when I picked it up off the ground, so I'm not sure that even non-waterproof matches are, you know, uh, are destroyed by rain all the time, or maybe they have to be left out for a while. I've got a large Fresno lens, um, which I, I think I have that featured in an upcoming video uh, that's good for starting fires, uh, and it's really super thin. Check out that video to see more about that. I also have a magnesium fire starter, which is small and light, so I've got it in there, but honestly, I never really use that but you know threw it in there anyway I've got a, a fishing hook with a, a short bit of line in case I wanted to try fishing uh, somewhere again that takes up very little space I've got a spotting scope uh, I think that's something that a lot of people don't think to have in their uh, their bug out bag uh, I think it's helpful to be able to see really far away at something if you it is a collapse situation and you're trying to assess some group of people as to you know, whether they're friendly or not, having a spotting scope I think is really helpful. I actually bought that to spy on my boy when he was in, uh, in, in preschool so that he wouldn't see me watching him, but I wanted to see, like, is he having a good time? Does he have a smile on his face? Because I was, like, hanging back in the parking lot, and I could see him moving around, but I couldn't tell if he was happy or not. So I actually bought that for uh, spying on my boy in preschool. <laughs> Uh, and he was having a good time. It was, it was, it was very encouraging. Uh, but I put that in there. I, I think it has a lot of uses. Um, you know, for a number of things, and I, I actually pull that out quite frequently, just, you know, when I'm hiking and I want to see something, you know, it's not always just a security thing, it's just kind of sometimes neat to be able to, like, see, oh, what's that up in the air? You know, it's a, oh, it's a UFO, it's a UFO. Uh, what else we got in here? I've got a couple Mylar emergency blankets, they're small, they're light, they don't take up much room at all. Uh, I've got a sewing kit in there, a sm very small one. Uh, I've got some, a bunch of tie-down straps, which I just keep on the top handle here. These little straps are just shoelaces, things like that. These came off of hoodies that got all torn up, and I just, you know, save pieces off of them. I use these all the time. These are one of the most commonly used things I have in the whole pack is tie-down straps. I'm always having a use for those things. So I keep them right on the outside of the bag, just like that. I've got some toothbrushes in there. I cut them down short. They, they weren't like special travel ones. I just cut them in half. Um, I've got a small, uh, small toothpaste tube some dental floss in there. That stuff's all really important, I think. It doesn't take up that much room, and it's important to take care of, you know, your mouth even if you're away from your house. There are, you know, sort of uh, primitive ways of doing that too, uh, but, you know, if you can throw a toothbrush in your pack, I think that's great. And I use this when I go out traveling or whatever, you know, even not in an emergency. I go and visit my parents' house. I know I don't have to pack a toothbrush because it's already in there. I just don't have to do it anymore. Uh, I keep some sunscreen in there, I keep some liquid soap, some hand sanitizer, some Neosporin. I use that a lot with my boy whenever he gets a cut or something. Uh, it's a way of kind of sanitizing it and everything, uh, you know, after we've washed it off. I, I keep a little new skin liquid bandage in there. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't use that very much. I think I've used that once or twice. Uh, I also keep band-aids in there for my boy. I use those quite a bit. Uh, he always wants a band-aid when he gets a little scrape or cut. Uh, I have some water purification tablets. I mentioned that I have a Life Straw water filter, but the tablets don't take up very much room, and it's nice to have alternate ways of doing all these things. Uh, I keep a pumice stone, uh, you know, if you get like a callus on your foot <laughs> or whatever. Again, it's very small, and this isn't just an emergency pack. If I'm out somewhere and I've got a callus, I can, you know, rub away the callus. And pumice stones weigh nothing, and it's a very small one. I just found it on the ground somewhere. Um, I keep some lip balm. I think that's a really important one. If you've ever had dry lips, like, to where, like, they're uncomfortable, it really can be distracting, and it's just not good for you to have your lips cracking. So if, if you're out and it's super dry, it's, it's good to have that. Um, you, you can also use lip balm for, you know, like, your knuckles or anything like that if you're getting dry. But that can be really uncomfortable. So having that, that lip balm, I think, is really helpful. Um... I've got some potassium iodine tablets. Uh, in New England, you're never that far from a nuclear power plant, so I keep some of those in there. Um, I also keep some ibuprofen, uh, some 200 milligram ibuprofen in a small, I'll show you what I got that in. That's actually kind of neat. Where is it? It's right in here. It's this little capsule. It looks like it could be like a suppository. <laughs> 
uh, this little thing, but it, it holds five or six little ibuprofens. I actually use that a lot. Like if I'm out and you know just I get a headache, I I've got like t the tendons in my neck or whatever. Oftentimes, will leave me with a bit of a headache. And if you got a headache, it's distracting. You're not at the top of your game. So I keep some ibuprofen in there to just get rid of a headache if I ever you know need to not have a headache. I've got some tweezers in there. Those obviously get a lot of use. Nail clippers. I actually use those all the time in here. Um, I've got a head bug net uh, that I uh, uh, have used uh, quite a number of times because in the and the the whole East Coast of the United States is very buggy and uh, you know if you just got flies biting in your face it's just very distracting. I've got some bandanas on the back that I just keep tied on here, which I usually just use as like you know handkerchiefs or whatever. But they can also be used as a washcloth, uh, you know, if you're just out and camping and that's all you've got. Uh, I've got a small pocket knife in there. Again, it's kind of redundant, but you know I've got I've got that in there. I have a wild edible plant book. I've done a whole series on wild edible plants, uh, and I know quite a bit about them. But I'm always learning, and uh, even for plants that I'm pretty familiar with, I always like looking up uh, in the plant book when I find them and see if there's other uses that I'm not familiar with. So I I use that quite a bit. I get that. In, in here, and uh, I think that's a great thing to have on your person whenever you, you're out and about in the woods. Uh, I've got an eating utensil tool, just one of those kind of like scoop things, which just, you know, makes things a lot easier. I've got a video coming up soon about how to make your own spoons, uh, but if you're not into that, having a spoon uh, or an eating utensil tool in here uh, is, is pretty handy. Uh, I've got some salt and pepper packs in there, uh, just, you know, it, if you're out and you need to kind of survive off the land and you're finding wild edibles and things of that nature, not a lot of it tastes that great. I mean, there's, there's many things that taste good, but there's a lot of plants that are kind of bland, and if you just put a little salt and pepper on them, you can take something that's kind of gross tasting and actually be pretty good, and you can get a decent meal out in the, out in the woods on, you know, greens anyway. Uh, I've got a can opener, one of those tiny little P38 can openers. I did a video on those recently. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Um, I got granola and energy bars in here. Uh, I use those all the time. I'm always, you know, giving those to the boy. I think it's just great to have in there. I, I've got six of them that I kind of keep rotating through, and always using those. And you can certainly imagine in an emergency having a little bit of that energy-rich food would be really helpful. Um, uh, I got two more things on my list, uh, which I added kind of recently. One is a pair of work gloves, uh, and I actually used those recently. I went to my uh, my boy's school; they were doing a parent work day. Uh, we're helping out with things, and I didn't think to bring any gloves, and I had them right in here. I like having work gloves because I don't like getting my hands torn up. I mean, I've got calluses and everything, but I feel like I'm stronger when I don't have to worry about getting a splinter when I grab something, and um, and you know just. You know, getting cuts and scrapes in your hands is a, a ve vector for infection, so the more that you can avoid, the better. And the last thing uh, I put in here just recently is some crystallized ginger uh, that I, I put in, uh, you know, for nausea, because crystallized candy ginger is really good at just snapping nausea out of your system, so I've got a little bit of that in here. And that's my EDC pack. That's what I carry around with me every day. Uh, I've been working on this list for a while. I've pulled some things out, I've added some things, but this is a pretty good list at this point. Now, do you need all this stuff? No, you don't have to copy what I do. Um, what I would recommend for anyone to figure out what you, need, what you need in your own bag is to just start going out and stop depending on what's around you. You know, if you are, get thirsty and you don't have water in your bag, start carrying water in your bag. If you're out and you get hungry, don't go to a grocery store and buy something. Well, you can go to a grocery store and buy something, but think that next time I'm going to have some food in there. If you're out and you're wishing you could, you know, pull a splinter out of your fingers, throw some tweezers in there. So just take your own life experience because everyone's life is different and learn from it and figure out what you need. And I would uh, extend that same advice to everything else that I have here. I mentioned I have a food bag, a camping bag, a shelter bag, all these things. The best way to figure out what you should have in all those bags is to just go out, go camping, and see what you're missing. Take, take a piece of paper. Oh, you know, I didn't mention that. I actually, I have some pencils. They're not on my list, but I have some pencils in here, and I, I always have a little bit of scrap paper because I think that that's always useful to have, you know, if you need to take a note or something like that. I, I don't know. That didn't make it on the list, but I, I, I do have some small pencils in there. I, I used to use pencils instead of pens because they'll work even if it's cold out. Uh, you know, the ink's not going to freeze and they're not going to leak or anything like that. Uh, but I, it's important to just, uh, you know, go out, camp, 
see what you're missing, and then just keep adding those things. Get yourself ready to go camping on 20 minutes notice, and the next time there's a hurricane or a wildfire or any kind of a natural or man-made disaster headed your way, you'll be in that position to just grab and go in 20 minutes and be a lot more comfortable for it. That's it. I hope that this has been a helpful uh, video for people. I know it's been a really long video for people. Uh, you know, I'm always long-winded, and in this video I knew it was going to be super long-winded. If you feel like there's anything that I've forgotten that would be helpful to have on my list, I'd, I'd really appreciate uh, you mentioning that in the comments below, both for my benefit and the benefit of other people. Uh, but get out there, try this stuff, get out, go camping, see what you're missing, see what you want, and then go from there. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.